Hello everyone. Welcome to the another part of our lecture two. This lecture is basically uh, organized uh, as a part of the faculty development program on the academic research writing, which is being organized by the TLC Ramanujan College and Institute of Home Economics, University of Delhi. So uh, in this lecture series, so uh, we are uh, trying to understand the effective responses that we uh, typically make to the reviewer comments. So, for example, when we uh, get uh, the different kinds of reviewers' comments, we have to understand that what is the entire peer review process. So, in the part one and part two of this lecture, we have understood that how uh, this entire thing works. What is a peer review process and how peer review process works and what are the different kinds of peer review like single blind peer review, double blind peer review, open peer review, what are the merits of each kind of peer review, what are the demerits of each kind of peer review. So we have to, uh, we have typically understood everything. So, uh, so I hope you have understood. So this part will deal with different kinds of comments. So the last part was different kinds of review. And this part was different kinds of comments. So now you will say that, okay, so reviewer comments can be like a straightforward question, right? Yes, they are generally the straightforward question, but sometimes they can be categorized in different forms. How are they can be categorized? So in this part of the lecture, we will understand what are the different kinds of reviewers comments that we generally get and what are the, how to deal with those uh, reviewers comments? Okay, so let's start with this part. First, let us understand what are the different kinds of reviewers comments. So we all know that there are different kinds of comments. That means whenever we get some responses from the reviewer, whenever you get some question from the reviewers, they are generally in different way. So uh, as a, a beginners, we understand that those comments must be very plain or very uh, motivating, but actually not. Those comments can be categorized, those comments can be divided uh, or can be classified into different parts. Firstly, there are different kinds of comments like the positive comments, negative comments, neutral comments, constructive comments, destructive comments, and irrelevant comments. So, so you 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 are very much aware like the different kinds of uh, questions that you uh, you face in your daily life from different from your supervisor, from your boss, from your colleagues, from your friends, from your families. So different comments. So you can understand the different comments like it's a positive or a negative. Same thing happened with the reviewer's comments. So here we will understand each of the uh, reviewer's comments one by one, and we will analyze how to deal with that. So let's start with the positive comment. Positive comments means good comments. So how can you identify it is a good comments or is a, a bad comment? For example, if a reviewer asked uh, that uh, the, the research methodology is robust and well-designed. So this means that the reviewer is actually giving a good vibes about the paper. That means it giving some, uh, yeah, his or she is giving a uh, good, uh, good appreciation to your paper. So when the research methodology is robust and well-designed, so how will you answer that? So the first and the foremost thing should you have done, that is a thanking the reviewer. So you thank the reviewer for their positive feedback and mention how their comment reinforces the strength of the study. Highlight any specific modification made to the further, uh, further enhance the methodology. That means uh, if they are saying that, okay, the research methodology is robust and well-designed, then you first thank them that thank you reviewer for your insightful comments. I do appreciate your, uh, or I do uh, care about your appreciation or your kind words. Uh, however, this uh, this uh, revised version of the research methodology or research revised version of the uh, methodology part has been improved in the revision during the revision by the other reviewers comments. And this is as follows. So if you have made any changes from the other reviewers, so you can also incorporate that. Another positive comments 
can be like the findings of the study have important implication in the field. That means this is a very good thing. If a reviewer has say like this, have said like this, that means that paper has very great chance of being accepted. That means reviewer himself is agreeing with the fact that the results of the study, that is the finding of the study has real life implication or have a real contribution to the domain or the community of the research. So when you get this kind of positive comment, so you get overwhelmed and happy, but actually you have to answer them very carefully. So how will you respond to him back? So first express the gratitude for the reviewer's recognition for the study's significance and explain how the revised manuscript further emphasizes the implication and potential impact of this finding. That means you have to tell them, okay, uh, we understand that uh, this study has a uh, or this study has a very important implication in the field of domain, but we have to understand that this study is generally very much fond of the future work. So what we will do, we will mainly work on the future studies. Next come the next word, which is the negative comments. So, uh, so generally what we do, we generally get different kinds of comments like the positive comments, but sometimes we don't need to be uh, sad or depressed with the negative comments that we get. So negative comments are generally the uh, comments which actually not uh, a kind of bad comment for you, but it's a kind of criticism. That means it's identify the faults in your paper. It identifies the limitation in your paper. So, so for example, if the reviewer commented like this, the data analysis is insufficient and lacks statistical rigor. So, what does it mean? That means the that means the reviewer has identified a major fault or major drawback in your paper. That means your data analysis is not complete. It needs some extra thing. What is the extra thing? And the he it needs some statistical analysis. So, can you see? Uh, from this uh, negative comments also, you are getting some more positive inputs. That means the reviewer is actually helping you to understand the lack limitation. And he's saying you that, he's telling you that what is the measure that you should take to improve the paper. So data analysis is insufficient and lacks statistical rigor. So how will you respond him back? Stay composed, avoid defensiveness. Don't avoid that, like don't, uh, don't defend. Like the uh, no, this is your your comment is not correct. Our data analysis is sufficient and it has all the uh, analysis are complete. No, never tell like that. You should respond him back like this: stay composed and very much uh, accepting acceptance nature. Okay, so you acknowledge the reviewer's concern and provide a detailed explanation of the revised data analysis. So what you say? Thank you so much for this uh, insightful criticism. We, I do, or I or we do appreciate your uh, kind suggestion. Uh, yes, we do agree that the data analysis is sufficient and lacks statistical rigor. So this is where in the revised manuscript, we have incorporated the statistical analysis and its results in the paper, which has been shown in section number this and section number that. And we have improved the data analysis with your suggestion. So this way, uh, you are actually defending that answer, but in a more positive way and with a back full of answer to them. So that means you are already working on the comment that he is giving to you. The next comment is uh, the introduction lacks clarity and fails to provide adequate background information. So it means that when, uh, when, uh, when you are writing the introduction, must be you are like lost, like uh, some sentences are not coherent to each other. Some there is no flow in the writing. So this kind of information loss is very common in writing paper. So while you write paper, please be careful that your every sentence is connected, every paragraph is connected. So whenever you write this thing, so reviewer is that means uh, the reviewer has read your paper very carefully. So how will you respond him back? You respond with a very professional way and acknowledge the reviewer's feedback. Describe all the improvement made to the introduction, such as providing more context 
clarifying key concept, background, theoretical studies, whatever you have, and incorporate relevant citation or references to enhance the clarity of the study. That means whenever they ask that the introduction lacks clarity and background information, you not only change the reverse version, but also answer the reviewers that what was the clarity that he was seeking. That means you, you describe in a more detailed way with proper references, proper sites. See, this is the background. So I got this motivation for this work. And uh, my objective is to uh, fill this gap, which has not been done so yet from the literature. So and so, so, so. So this kind of negative comments can instantly transform into positive comments if you can fight well. The next comment is the neutral comments. So what is neutral comments? So neutral comments are the comments where the reviewers actually neither pos say positive nor negative. That means it is just straightforward. Straightforward ask you something to do. So for example, you say, please clarify the abbreviation used in figure three. This is neither positive nor negative. So you don't need to worry. So for example, if you have used SVM, the figure three shows the uh, the output of the SVM SVM study, but they doesn't. But you have not used the full form of SVM, so you have used only the abbreviation of SVM. So uh, the reviewer wants to know that what is the full form of SVM that you have used. So how will you answer that? You will seek clarification from the reviewer if necessary. For example, if you are also not understanding, you can ask them that what are you specifically asked for. If you understand that what they are asking for then just simply provide a concise explanation of the abbreviation in question. That means you say, uh, we are uh, we apologize for the uh, mistakes that we have made in the first draft of our manuscript. In the revised draft, we have incorporated the changes and we have uh, written the uh, full form of the word being used and also the abbreviation in the bracket. So if you have used the SVM, just write it in the figure three that the figure three depicts the uh, the output of the support vector machine bracket SVM for uh, the uh, so 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 analysis. So you have to make the change in the figure titles caption. You have to make the changes in the entire paper, and also you have to clarify uh, the reverse comments because sometimes what reviewers may not check everything on the paper. He just uh, see the reviewers comments. Uh, file and if he gets satisfied he accept your paper unless he will give another revision or reject the paper so what is the reviewer comment like neutral for example consider expanding the discussion section to address the potential alternative explanation so this is a kind of complex neutral sentence or complex neutral suggestions how to deal with that just try to read it carefully consider expanding the discussion section to address potential alternative explanation. That means whenever they are asking you something like this, you have to write more and more in the discussion section. And what you will write? You will have to write the more potential implication or possible future work that can be done with your experiment or that can be done with your contribution. So you appreciate the reviewer suggestion because he is actually improving your work and demonstrate how the revised version uh, of the discussion section incorporates the consideration of the alternate explanation, presenting a more comprehensive analysis of the result. The next thing we have to be careful about the constructive comments. Constructive comments are basically a kind of positive comments, which actually help to improve our paper. So for example, if the reviewer comment like this, the methodology would benefit from including a control group. So this kind of comment is actually helping the paper, but also it increases the work because you have to sometimes do or redo the entire experiment or add something new to the experiment and do everything from scratch. So here in this comment, the methodology would uh, benefit from including a control group. So control group means the uh, the group, the target population you are taking and the population which can be considered as a baseline. So so that's kind of group they want uh, you to include. You know. So whenever you, now, now you again have to go for the survey, again you have to uh, collect data and again have to analyze everything comparing the control group. So basically you are again doing the experiments. 
So you cannot say that, no, we don't have time. We cannot do this experiments again and all these things. It is actually improving your paper maybe. So you welcome the reverse constructive comment with a uh, very warm welcome and explain how a control group has been added to the revised manuscript section. Now, if you think that the, uh, the control group cannot be added or it is impossible or it is uh, not relevant to your paper, just tell them very mildly, politely with the kind words that we think that the control group may not be added to this because this is this, this, this point. So point-wise explain why you have not included a control group in your experiments. Then the reviewer will understand, okay, maybe that was my mistake. I could not understand that way. So uh, the authors are correct. So uh, another uh, construction comments like the consider revising the conclusion to explicitly state studies limitation. This is very common uh, statement made by a revision. So uh, a reviewer. So maybe reviewer asks to add the uh, limitation or the gap of the work. So this is not the gap of the literature that or the previous work. This is the gap that they want to know from this work. That means no work is perfect, right? Anyway, if you have done a big experiment, there is something is left behind. So they want to know what is being left behind. So what are the still a gap or limitation or challenges that you faced during this experiment? And if in future work or in future study, if you want to incorporate, what are these parameters that you want to uh, add that in the future studies? So you have to be very careful and conclude a single line or two line sentence, not more than that, just one line or two line sentence with a clear transparent statement that what is the lim study's limitation and how this limitation may impact in the generalizability. So one thing you have to do, you have to say that uh, you have to uh, write in such a way that limitation you understood, but it's not a big thing. And also how limitation is not impacting the present study. Although, Solving that limitation would help to improve the paper, but still it is not impacting much to the present study. So you have to uh, tell them like this. The next comment is a destructive comment. So destructive comment are sometimes uh, very bad and negative comments. This is not only a comment that actually um, help to improve the paper. This is not the comment that actually uh, finding the lacks or limitation in the paper that this destructive comments are the comments which are the unnecessary comments which the reviewer sometimes makes to demotivate the authors. This is the, uh, how can I say, like this is the bait you cannot uh, eat like uh, that. So, so what do you do? So, for example, if a reviewer asks that uh, this study is poorly designed and lacks any scientific rigor. So do you have really answer for that? Can you say, no, this, this study is a very well-designed study and it's a very scientific and robust study. You cannot tell that because something cannot be challenged. Something cannot be defended. This kind of comments are like that. And even if you are not, you cannot uh, agree with them. Yes, we agree that this study is poorly designed and lacks any scientific rigor. So please reject my paper. So you cannot tell like that also. So how will you manage to answer this kind of comment? So you please maintain a good professionalism, a refrain from engaging in a confrontation tone and very mild, very mildly, uh, kindfully address that they comment objectively. Provide a detailed explanation of the study, entire details of the methodology, and any improvement made in the revised manuscript. So basically, you are actually avoiding the question or the, the concern they have asked. You are actually uh, um, portraying that what changes, what improvement you have made so that uh, your improvement and your uh, revision can suppress that concern. Okay, try to understand this carefully. For example, if they ask that the authors seem to have a limited understanding of the topic, and have not contributed anything novel to the field. This is also a very bad uh, destructive comment because uh, if the reviewer cannot understand anything or if you have done a small novelty, then they should ask you for the improvement. But if they're not asking for the improvement, then 
if they are giving this kind of comment, that's the destructive. So you you don't need to um, uh, defend this comment as well. So how will you answer? You focus on valid points with the comments and disregard the personal attack. Do not uh, take personally the attack they have made. So just be mild and polite with them. You Again, you avoid this his concern and suppress that with your own contribution, own novelty. So you, in the answer, you say, thank you for this. Uh, not thank you, 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 can, you can say, thank you for this comment. We understand your concern. However, the, we have a unique contribution made in this research and uh, as highlighted below, so you point-wise highlighted many, many points with all the novelty you have done, all the work you have done, and explain that how the revised manuscript has improved in terms of methodology, in terms of study, in terms of discussion and all these things. So you have to prove that, that you already have a novelty in your paper and you have also improved that in the revised manuscript. And the last thing that is also very important are the irrelevant comments. So what are irrelevant comments? These are the comments which are unnecessary. That means neither constructive, not destructive, not positive, not negative. So these comments are like the comments which are not relevant to the paper. So sometimes uh, what happens sometimes when a paper has been submitted to a journal, it is going to uh, it is uh, passed on to some reviewers and the reviewer has no time and some student of that particular reviewer just check and he has no knowledge in that subject. So what he does, he just simply writes something randomly. So irrelevant comments are generally the random comments. So how, how to uh, deal with that? So for example, if we get a comment like this, the, sh the study should also include a comparison of different treatment option. For example, you have done a computational study, you have done a study of developing an algorithm, then how would you include a comparison of different treatment? So, so that is completely irre irrelevant for your work, completely unnecessary thing which they are asking. So how will you respond? To politely clarify the scope and focus of the study, he emphasized that the research question does not encompass or comparison of the treatment option. You explain why you are not doing that. You explain the rationale behind the study specific, and you explain the research objective and your alignment with the journal scope and manuscript content. If you add, if you, you have to uh, explain them that why addition of these things will change the entire manuscript scope. So very politely, you change this. Another comment like, please provide a detailed analysis of the political implication of the finding. So for example, you have written a science paper. So there is no way you can write a political implication of the finding. So you have to again respectfully explain that the study primarily focus on different aspects and it does not deal with the political implication. So what you have to do, you, you cannot say that I don't need to add this. You briefly explain again and again the research objectives, the motivation of the study, the gap of the study which you are going to fill, and what are your contribution in this paper. That this paper is only stick to this scope and you, it does not imply any kinds of implication that is inclined to the politics. So irrelevant comments and unnecessary comments are sometimes also very difficult to answer and very difficult to avoid. So you have to be very careful on the destructive comments and irrelevant comments. So what reviewers actually expect during the resubmission of a revised manuscript? So, so when a revised manuscript is being uh, submitted, thoroughly respond to each comments individually. So do not miss, do not skip any comment. It demonstrates that you have carefully considered and addressed all the reviewers' concerns. So whatever the comment is, maybe the comment is a half line or maybe of two to three words. So you have to answer that. So do not skip or miss any particular comment. Clearly indicate in your response letter that how each comment was addressed in the revised manuscript. So you have to be careful, say that, in section number three, in subsection number 3.2 or something like that, this comment has been addressed or in the revised manuscript who has incorporated the changes in that particular, uh, in response to the particular comment. And finally, you have to provide a point by point responses 
using a structured format ensure clarity on organization. So it is not just writing in a straight flow. Try to write in bullets, try to write in uh, point by point option and many things you can try on. So it should be very neat and clear and all well organized. So responding back to the reviewer is a very crucial thing which we have to be careful because uh, even if we get a minor revision, in the next round, our paper can be rejected if we are not carefully commenting the reverse comments. So this is very important in that. So please be careful about that. So I hope that you have understood that what are the different kinds of comments that we may uh, face. And I have explained you all kinds of comments that we face in details with a response, uh, with the comments and how you can uh, deal with that, how you can respond back. And if you still have any problem, you can reach out to me and uh, in the meantime, uh, try to read it again carefully, uh, this uh, lecture. And uh, in the next part, we will deal with more examples, real life and real uh, answers that what we can give to our reviewers. So see you in part four of this lecture. Thank you so much.